Hello everybody, Prince of the Bear here, and we're back at Magic Kingdom because we wanted to go to CRT or Cinder Rose Royal Table for breakfast. But we missed our dining reservation. But like this much, this much. Remember to give yourself time to get here. We gave ourselves an hour with a 20 minute drive and it still wasn't enough. But thankfully we had some beautiful Disney magic happen for us. I actually cried out of tears of joy and stress running up here. We got a lunch reservation. So we're gonna do lunch instead. Yes. So uh, let's go sit at the table. Be sure to stay magical and subscribe. I heard the girl. This is the beautiful Royal Celebration flight. It comes with the same champagne that you can get at Be Our Guest. Um, starting with this beautiful uh, blueberry one that also has boba balls in it. And uh, can I just say I love these glasses. They're so cute and tiny. Oh yeah. You know what? It kind of reminds me of that blueberry champagne you used to get at the White Lab back in the day. Give me a, drop me a light emoji in the comments if you remember the light lab. I'm gonna give it four out of five light labs. Luckily for me, the princess couldn't take these home. Uh, wouldn't matter anyway, because this is never gonna be a big enough glass of champagne or wine for either of us. Mmm, it smells like blueberry. Mmm. It's a nice, sort of like subtle blueberry mimosa feel to it. I am glad they don't have bottomless mimosas. They might have to wheelchair me out of here. That's a four out of five plus. We have this beautiful uh, strawberry version of the champagne with some lovely little uh, strawberry um, puree in here. It definitely changes the flavor of the champagne. This one has more of like a champagne taste to it than like a flavor taste to it like the blueberry did. I kind of, I'm kind of into it. I would give it uh, also four out of five strawberries. Good old strawberry wine. It's like the champagne I will forgive, uh, strawberry champagne. I will forgive the fruit on the champagne. It's not like my whiskey cocktails. This I can tolerate. Now, getting my mouth on this is kind of a problem, but I like the garnish. Ooh. It manages to get that uh, that strawberry tartness in there. A little sweet, but then you get a little bit of tart at the end, it goes well. Give that three and a half out of five claws. The blueberry is still my favorite. Our final one is the champagne by itself with 24 karat gold flakes. I don't know why we put 24 karat gold flakes in here. Maybe because we fancy, you know, and we're at Cinderella's Royal Table. But, um, gold slugger? This is just the champagne in its truest form with some beautiful garnish to make it fancy for the 50th. Um, I guess I'm buying the gimmick because I like the flight, but I'm giving this a 3 out of 5 gold flakes. Gold flake in your champagne, proving that even when you're a princess, the expectation is that even your excrement should took it. If you don't know what that word is, go ask your parents. 3 out of 5 plus.
Blueberry, definitely my favorite. Mm -hmm. A nice vegan dark beer that is made by the same brewery that does Le Fin, which we love to get in Canada when you go the wrong way. That actually kind of reminds me of like a dunkle or something. This is good. I kind of don't want to share this or give it back. I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five beers. This is a dark beer that I would I would drink and would actually kind of want to steal, steal this from the bear. It seems that every time I turn my head, there's something from the, the brewery that does look in uh, that I haven't had. And something as dark as this just resonates with my soul. I'm not sharing this with the princess. She has her, her champagne, and I have my dark beer. I will call up the Mary Minton, and we will, we will fight over this beer. I promise you. Wait, did he, what do you put in there? Ooh, the lolly, that's amazing. I would trade Mary Marion for this. Yeah, yeah, I'd trade her for this. Four and a half out of five cost. very interesting version of the castle salad. We haven't had this castle salad in some time. Uh, they used to have a vegan cheese plate. They just got rid of it. Supply issues. And destroy the salad. Ooh, look, there's little mandarins in here. We got some grapefruit. We got some tomato. We got shredded lettuce. Okay. I just... I mean, obviously you're supposed to shred lettuce, but for some reason this just gives me Amare salad vibes. Hmm. It's extremely citrusy. Perfect for the summer. It's light and bright. I'm full of uh, fruits. It's interesting to have so many fruits in your in your salad. Two and a half out of five salads. It reminds me of Amare. Definitely. Now, now mentioning anything that comes from Cinderella's Royal Table and Amare in the same sentence almost feels like slander, but given the side of this lettuce, all out. Uh, this looks like a very citrus heavy salad. I do like fruit in my salad. I don't know how I feel about grapefruit and mandarin. That feels like a lot, but I'm gonna make sure that I get both, just so you guys know how I feel about it. Feels like uh, citric acid with a side of lettuce. For me, personally, that's a one out of five quads. It's edible, but it just barely. Maybe Mari had the right way. We got some seeds in here, which were nice. And a lot of grapefruit. I'm not a big grapefruit person, but like the lettuce. Let's talk about this lettuce here. You know, we all have different sizes that we like to do our leaves of lettuce. But for me, I feel like there's a line between a salad shredding and then like a taco like shredded lettuce. And this salad, plus the salad at Amare, they both suffer from shredded taco lettuce problem. I think somebody just had a little bit too much fun cutting lettuce today. Or maybe they wanted to make like salsa or a slaw or who knows but this is a little excessive a little bit bigger piece just just a little bit bigger and i don't want to wedge where i have to cut my own salad either like let's goldilocks it here give it like a little middle i don't know tell me in the comments what's the right right salad size or am i just crazy you just eat shredded lettuce is it fine mm -hmm. So, for my appetizer of this prefix, three, four course meal? Three? Three, three course meal. Uh, I got these steamed mussels. Comes in this beautiful plating with 
two pieces of like this like grilled bread. We have like uh, what's it, four or five muscles in there with some greens and a uh, nice coconut curry. I don't know how I'm supposed to eat this, but we're gonna figure it out together. We'll take a muscle. We're gonna dig out said muscle. Here on a spoon with a piece of shell because, you know, shells. Uh, we're gonna dump that on some toast. I'm gonna get deep down in here and I'm gonna get some of this coconut curry. I'm gonna drizzle that over top. Just like so. Yes, excellent. And then we're going to treat it like a kid with an airplane spoon. Yeah. Mm. My head doubts. Muscle is, is really good, perfectly cooked. Coconut curry gives really a good flavor. The bread is extremely salty. You almost need the coconut curry to calm down some of the salt and out some of the flavor. It's got a good flavor punch without being too, too much of that oceany flavor you would get with like uh, shellfish. But it's still really good. I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five plus. Um, my mom went in and said it was like three or four. It's like double that. That was definitely a generous helping of muscles. I definitely wouldn't expect that much. The flavors just keep getting better the deeper you go in. It's like the curry soaks in with the muscles. There's a little bit of heat to it too. So it's like a two out of ten on spice scale. I like that. It's like flavorful but spicy. We have the Caprice pennies. Now, the last time we came here, I was absolutely in love with this dish. But the size. The size is noticeable. So, I guess we're going to try it anyway, see how it is, even though it's gotten a lot smaller. Let's uh, go here. Let's grab a little pennies. Some of this uh, vegan blue chest. Cheers. Oh man, it's just as good as I remember. And the sauce has this beautiful kick to it. Oh, oh wow. Oh my goodness. That is so good. Now, I've been obsessed with pennies ever since the last time we came here. It's really easy to make. All you need is chickpeas and water, pretty much. Or flour, I don't remember. It's like three ingredients. It's really easy. Maybe won't we make it at home, because that means experimenting, and then if I experiment on a dish and it doesn't work out, then maybe we won't have dinner. So, maybe on a weekend I'll try it, and then I'll share my recipe with you, because pennies, it's beautiful. It's amazing. It's delicious. And it's just made out of chickpeas, so it's like pure protein. This is all protein on here. Carrots, chickpeas on chickpeas. Like this is a this is a beautifully balanced dish. Even though it's small, it'll give me the nutrients that I need to get through a full day at Magic Kingdom. Five out of five. Cinderella's. It's a princess in this item for sure. It's like a fallen tower of carrots and chickpea rubble. I don't know why when I see this, for some odd reason I'm reminded of um, the Bride of Frankenstein haunted house at Holland Horror Nights. Yeah, I know. I know you're looking at me weird right now. It's getting close to Halloween. Because you know Halloween now starts August 1st. Um, I remember the first of this dish. Yes, I want to experiment with the dish. Making this dish at home, the one time I think we tried, will stress her out. And I don't like to see our princess stressed. No, you guys don't like this princess, but if you want to, this thing gets 150 likes. Not only will she make it, I'll help her. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of the panisse. I'm gonna steal a little bit of the carrot here. 
because I may be bear, but I'm also part rabbit. Got a little bit of the sauce. It's gonna be like a trapeze act. This is gonna be fun. Forget that chickpea. We already have chickpeas. Mmm. It's kind of hard to explain the texture of the panini chips because it's not, it's chickpeas, but it's not as dense as a falafel. It's like a, and it's, it's, it's more dense than like a serving of plantains. It's almost like a plantain cake, but it's somewhere in the middle of like it's far consistent between polenta cooked normally and then say a falafel, but it's got a really nice texture to it. The sauce sticks to it well. The carrots give it a nice sweetness on top of that. All in all, all the flavors work very well. This dish, we like last time, and I still like it now. Even if you aren't vegan or vegetarian, you want something a little bit lighter, while still getting the ambiance of Santa Rosa on the table, because that's why we're really here. I mean, you say you come for the food, but we know the truth. You're here for the princesses, and you're here to say you're inside of the castle. If you're not looking for a really heavy meal, I'm telling you as a lifelong meat eater, that you will miss nothing eating this dish. Four and a half out of five plus. This is literally my magic carpet ride. It's actually what it's called. So you have a nice bone out pork shank and then a little crisp on top to simulate your magic carpet. We have uh, some Israeli pearl couscous on the bottom, which is like a regular in our household. And then a nice helping of pork belly here on the side. It's a beautiful plated dish. I actually like the dish itself. I would steal this plate. I won't steal this plate. But I like these plates. Disney's the king of the plates. So let, let's see if I even need the knife for this pork shank here. I'm assuming I don't. Yeah, I need it. It's tender, but it's not that tender. A little cut. Now it is a little dry on the side. That kind of worries me. We're gonna leave that to the side there. Actually, we're gonna do it by itself first. Give it a shot. It's kind of a chew. But the flavor's still there. It's not dry, it's just a little bit more cooked than I like my pork. It's not fall off the bone, and it's not like medium rare pork chop either. It's like a hair over medium. But let's try that now with a little bit of the pork belly. So we're gonna do the pork belly. Let's scoot this little boy to the side here. See that, that I don't need a knife for. That's just falling apart. And I'm gonna hack off a piece of little magic carpet. And then we're gonna take the pork. We're gonna put in a little drizzle of sauce here. And it did give you sauce, but I don't feel like it give you enough. You just don't have to rub your food in. I'm gonna spear this pork belly here. And put a little bit of the crisp right on top. And then we're gonna give it a true rating. Mm. Okay. That is the way it's meant to be eaten. The crisp from pork belly, or this crust here, with the pork chink and the sauce, the crisp, is an amazing texture and flavor. That is like, it's not signature dining, but this, Rivals that double braised pork belly that you get at Nine Dragons. It's that level of good. I'm gonna give that a solid four out of five plus. Better as a whole, but there's some weaker parts of the dish. But overall, I still enjoy it and would order this again. Now we have the couscous here with some veggies. We have the couscous here with some veggies.
is a nice addition. They charred it a little bit, so there's some char on that. We don't usually char our couscous at home, but I think I should try that once or twice. It has a nice, like, smoky flavor to it, and I think it goes well with both meats. It's definitely a similar design size, but I love the flavors. I'm sticking with my four out of five flour grade. so full but I'm also on my phone looking up a recipe on how to make patties at home. I'm ready. If you have a recipe let me know. I'll, I'll try cooking it. I cook anything. Or, well, not anything. Selectively anything. Thank you. So we have this uh, coffee dessert of the past that we had last time we were here. The color and the consistency has changed. And the topping has also changed as well. This is very much, it's very, very liquidy. As, before, as opposed to last time, it was not like, it was not this liquid. But on the spoon, it keeps its shape rather nicely. you can taste the flavors a little bit more that it's not like fully gel like it was last time. You taste the coffee, you taste the vanilla. There's a tartness in there. There's milk in there. It's very strong with the vanilla bean, like raw vanilla bean. It's good. It's great for the coffee lovers out there. I don't think I like it as much as I like it last time. I feel like maybe somebody didn't didn't set this properly this this time. This wasn't maybe not prep the way it should have been. How you have been around long enough and you're new here. Uh, I avoid drinking off in this channel. Mostly doctor ordered. Uh, avoiding the caffeine. But I will try just a little bit. I don't have caffeine basically ever at this point. So a little bit isn't going to kill me. Oh, but it's an interesting dish. I think I'm gonna steal a coffee passion fruit mousse with coconut cream. That would explain the consistency. That makes a lot more sense. It is a little bit more jingle jiggly, like a, the money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. A little bit of flour. I can actually describe it. Definitely coffee. The passion fruit is there, but it's very, very subtle. Another one you can't do is coconut cream, because if you could, the princess would not eat that. It's very balanced for something that's main ingredient is coffee. But instead of the coffee lover, you will love this. You'll be sad that you can't this in Starbucks. I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five. And here we have the clock chart 12, which is this beautiful layered of cake. It's layered with a chocolate mousse from praline and a chocolate shell. A nice clock tower, like white chocolate medallion on top with a hazelnut gelato. I assume that they're meant to be eaten together. So we're gonna go ahead and carve off a piece of this layered cake here. Comes off extremely smooth. See the layers of delicious in there. We're gonna dip it in a little bit of this hazelnut gelato and enjoy it like a classy beer, yogi style. Mm. They combo each other well. It's more like a, um, what do they call the brownie and ice cream? And a brownie, hot chocolate brownie and an ice scoop ice cream. What do they call that? Like a hot fudge sundae? Yeah, one of those. But elevated. It's a nice, soft cake. Those different layers in there and the hazelnut. It's like a nice, like middle of the road sweet without going extreme in the direction. I don't normally like dessert, but I love this. Four and a half out of five plus. So an un semi-unplanned luncheon to Nodrillo's 
brought that, that a semi unplanned lunch at Cinderella's Royal Table. I'm glad that we didn't spend $42 on me getting an avocado toast. Which is what it would have been. Yeah, instead we spent $200 on lunch for three courses. Which I guess is, you know, it's, 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 be it's better, I guess. If, if you're going to Cinder's Royal Table, the food is good. Mostly above average, but you're definitely paying your premium for the location. And it's definitely not character dining, which is weird. Because when we came at the reopen, there was character experience but it was like cinderella walking around upstairs now she's back in the, the main hall and there's no characters roaming around upstairs and then when you leave they had the basket of the swords and the wands so the kids still get the swords and the wands we just don't we don't we don't need any more drunk water on the house no, we have enough uh, but we want to know how much are you guys looking forward to going to cinderella's, cinderella's roll table i know that it is high on a lot of people's lists it is. after seeing this how do you feel about it let us know in the comments if there's anywhere else that you'd like to see us go or you would like to see us come back for breakfast and we will try uh the comments gonna place let us breakfast know this is hard you guys i'm sorry I'm it sorry. is a little hard uh hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this and we have new videos five days a week monday tuesday wednesday thursday saturday we will see you soon be sure to subscribe and like this video and if you don't comment, I'm pretty sure Bear is just going to eat himself inside of Cinderella's castle and then get banned for life. So you should just do that so if he doesn't get banned. Because I want to keep coming to Disney World. I'd probably just climb the castle instead. But you heard the girl. Horse perspective.